probably because he knows that we're not glad. Well, good morning, and uh, at least we're going to go live through Facebook. I can't seem to get our YouTube channel going, so we're live through Facebook through a modern science called my cell phone. And I hope you can see me because I can't tell if you can see me or not. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> if you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 2. You know what? God has a, a message, a word, um, and I believe that with all my heart. And I appreciate you who came out in this weather. And uh, uh, we had a little bit of worship there. Uh, and... Uh, Tom, you're on our, our massive uh, text, right? Well, so is, so is Antonio. Would someone send a text out to everyone and say that Pastor Rex is on his channel and he is live on Facebook? And, so, and hopefully they don't shut me down because I get a little intensive. Anyway, Genesis chapter 2. I want to read verses 8 and then I want to read verses 15, 16, and 17. And that's where I want to begin today. Because I want to talk to us today about when God speaks. And it says this, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest it thereof, thou shalt surely die. And I want us to focus on verses 16 and 17 there. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Let's begin in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And I just pray, dear God, today that we would recognize how important it is to hear your voice. To allow you to speak to us through the various means that you have chosen to do so. And God, I pray that we would allow you to speak into every aspect of our lives so that we may know you and love you and give you, dear Lord God, all that we have for you. Lord God, I, I pray that we would just open ourselves and I ask that you, dear Lord God, would just move in our lives. Touch us as we go through and we see this word in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, I want to talk to you about the power of the word. Now, the Bible tells us in James that the tongue is a very intensive item in the body. In fact, it says that it is a fire. It is a spark that starts just a little, it's just a little spark, but it starts a major fire if we're not careful. And we need to learn how to use our tongue. But the power of a word, a word can break a soul or it can encourage a soul. It can give life and it can bring harm. It can cause discouragement but it can also encourage in a way that, that uh, causes people to go out and fight with everything they have to do whatever it is that God intends for them to do. And you and I, we have that power in our word, but I want to talk about how God's voice, God's spirit, has the authority that gives us a hope and a help that can move through us and live in us and can touch you today to be the person that God has called you to be. You know, we, uh, we know this God. Those of us who have accepted Him as our Savior, we know that he, He's already spoken into our lives. I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in just a moment. But we need to recognize that the authority of the voice is what really makes the difference. The, the authority on a subject can really have a lot to do with, with how people perceive that that is being spoken. You know, I, I am not an authority on engineering things. That's not me. 
I am not an authority on uh, some uh, mechanical issues, but folks normally listen to me because as I minister, because uh, I've been in, in ministry for a long time. But the ultimate authority on all things, we need to recognize as God Almighty. And we need to re realize that our reaction to what we hear is as important uh, in our lives. Because as we re react, we recognize that when God speaks, it can change us. It can change me, it can change you, it can change whatever we are dealing with. The Bible tells us in the very beginning, in Isaiah chapter 55, that uh, God says in verses 18 through 13, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain comes down and there is snow from heaven, and returns not thither but watereth the earth, it makes it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. When God speaks, His, His words are not just void. They're not just uh, spoken into the air and, and have no consequence. But when God speaks, things change. And he said that his word will never return to him without accomplishing what he has set it out to do. In John chapter 1, we read the first four verses and it says, In the beginning was the word. Well, who is that word? It is Jesus Christ. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by God. Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. And we find that creation, that spoken word. We find that Jesus is in the beginning, is the second person of the Trinity. And words are spoken in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm not going to read all of these, but if you read verses 1 through 3 and 5 through 7... 9, 11 through 21, 23 through 27, and 31. Well, you might as well just read the whole chapter, Genesis chapter 1. But if you read through Genesis chapter 1, what you'll find out is that in the beginning, the Bible says God created the heaven and the earth. Well, how did He do that? He spoke. And we find in verse 3, God said, let there be light and what? There was light. Well, if you read John chapter 1, continue down through John chapter 1, you'll find that we find that Jesus was the light of men. And He was the light that was sent into the world by God to make changes, to give us hope in a hopeless world, in a world of sin. And this is that light. Because light emanates from God. He is Light And he is life. And so when God said, let there be light, he was allowing his spirit, his power to emanate upon the earth. Well, you say, well, no, wasn't that the sun? Wasn't that the reflection of the moon? Wasn't that light, the stars that we see around? Well, no, because actually the, uh, uh, the light wasn't then, uh, the lights in the firmament wasn't brought about until the fourth day. So the sun and all of the other things, they weren't even brought about. But the light that transformed the earth in the very first day was the light of God. He is the life-giving light. And so in Genesis chapter 1, we see a reflection of John chapter 1. We see that when God speaks and says, let there be, there is. Because He is the one that can speak it and bring it to existence and change our circumstances. In fact, we see another physical evidence of this in Joshua chapter 10. When Joshua was going into the battle against the Amorites, Joshua said, uh, prophesied and said, Sun stand still and moon stand still in the valley of Ajalon. And the Bible says in verse 13, Joshua chapter 10, the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Well, you say, well, that was Joshua speaking. No, it was Joshua prophesying. But if you look in the next verse, verse 14, it says there was no day like that before 
or after it, for the Lord hearkened unto the voice of Joshua and fought for Israel. It was the Lord through Joshua's prophecy laid on his heart by God himself that stopped the sun from moving. Well, we know that what happened is the earth stopped rotating for as long as it took for the Amorites to be defeated. What an incredible day because we know that gravity is created by the movement of the earth. And so when... God set the earth still. He kept it in stasis. He kept it as it was. Why? Because God can say whatever He wants to, whenever He wants to, and He can change the circumstances that you're going through. In Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 24, we find the story that Jesus is in the ship with His disciples, and He's out on the waters, and the waters begin to, to, to rise up in a storm, and uh, the wind was great upon the lake and they were afraid. And they came to Jesus and said, hey, aren't you afraid that we're going to perish? And the Bible says Jesus arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased and there was a calm. I'm here to tell you, your circumstances can change when God speaks. Your circumstances around you can change when God speaks. And uh, in Mark chapter 2, he, uh, he, is, he is ministering in Capernaum. And as he entered into Capernaum, there was a, he went into a house to speak. And, and there was a crowd that was gathered around and, and stuffing themselves in the, in the doorway. And there was no way to get to him. But there was a man who was sick of palsy and he couldn't get to Jesus. So his brothers, his, his friends, took him up on top of the roof. Now this is faith. This is faith and this is important because as Jesus is speaking in this house, they took the roof off. You talk about raising the roof. This was an exciting time. They literally took the roof apart and lowered this man down in front of Jesus and said, and Jesus looks at this man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed, hadn't been able to walk. And Jesus looks at him and says, what? Rise up and walk. No, he says, your sins be forgiven you by your faith. And the people around were like, time out. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus said, do you think it's harder for me to say I forgive you of your sins and it's done? Or do you think it's harder for me to say rise up and walk? And he said, but so that you will know. That I am the Lord. That I have this power. That God has the power to forgive sins. He said He said to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way to thy house. When Jesus speaks, when God speaks, your circumstances will change. You know, my sister is... Uh, was lying in a hospital, is still lying in a hospital today. She had a surgery on her back uh, just a couple of days ago. Yesterday, she, she had no feeling in her left leg, I believe it was. And she said, I couldn't get up, I can't walk. This morning, we got the, the uh, word that she can now move her foot about an inch. Hey, that's exciting. That's something. I told her last night, now it's not my prayers that do these things. So when I say I, I've prayed for these things, I, hey, I got on my knees last night. My daughter Crystal lost her phone. And we couldn't contact her all day. And we finally got a hold of her daughter. And she said, well, mom lost her phone. I got on my knees last night just before I went to bed. And I said, God, please give Crystal an understanding. Help her to find her phone. You know what? This morning, she found her phone. Now, that might sound a little strange. But I believe God cares about all of these things. And last night, I told my sister, Cindy, I said, you know, I don't think you got to take up your bed. Just let me tell you, those hospital beds are heavy. But I said, I don't believe you have to take up your bed. But I believe you're going to rise up and walk. And I believe that today, even as the power of God is real, I believe that as we continue to pray, in fact, I would say even under the authority of God, rise up and walk and allow God to do these things. When God speaks this power into your life, it changes things. And I believe His power is real, just as real today as it was in the days that we read of in the book of Mark. 
Because when God speaks, things change. I believe that God, when God speaks, society changes. In Genesis chapter 12, he speaks to Abraham and he says to Abraham, I will make of thee a great nation. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And I'm here to tell you today Israel is under attack by those who are trying to destroy her. They need to be careful because the God of Israel, the God of the universe, is on their side. Genesis chapter 18, Abraham and Sarah were not allowed or did not have children by themselves. Sarah was 89 years old. Abraham was 100. And God had said, I will make of thee a great nation with you and Sarah. And we find that in Genesis chapter 18, that three come by. And the Bible says the Lord appeared to Abraham and was speaking with him. And he said, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son at 90 years old. You know. I guarantee you that if the Lord came to Janet and I and said, you're going to have a son, and her at 90, that <laughs> she'd say, we already have a son. <laughs> but now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah as the manner of women. In other words, and you know, Abraham and Sarah were still active in their marital relationships, or she wouldn't have had a baby. But the Bible says that Sarah, God moved upon Sarah. God even said when Sarah laughed at this thing, is anything too hard for the Lord? I am asking you today, is anything too hard for the Lord? If God says He's going to raise up a nation, He's going to raise it up. In Genesis chapter 1, it says, or 21 Verse 2, it said, Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time that God had spoken to them. In Daniel chapter 2, this is reiterated. God, Daniel spoke, blessed be the name of, the, of God forever and ever. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. We need to recognize, even though our society is where it is, this was the last days predicted in the Word of God. We are living in days where God has not lost control. We think so. We get all bummed out. And yes, people are acting in evil ways. Timothy tells us that in the last days, perilous times. But God is still in control. He's not going to allow anything to happen but what He knows it's coming. And He can still intervene. We still need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We still need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for an upsurgence of the move of God in our lives and in our communities. And we need to pray that God will have His way. In Ephesians chapter 4, or in John chapter 3, excuse me. We go on and we find that when God speaks, it brings life. So not only does God, can God change the physical, not only can God change the societal, but God brings life. And I'll tell you what, today we hurt sometimes, but God brings life. The world needs the life that comes through Jesus Christ. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, John chapter 3 says, Even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, and whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's life. That changes us. Our spirits are made alive. It's called the new birth. To have be a new creation in Him. God can also give us gifts and empower us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. 
In verse 8 it says, One is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom, and another the word of knowledge. Another faith by the same Spirit, another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. Another the discerning of spirits, another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work is the same Spirit, dividing every man severally as he will. And he has set some in the church. Verse 28 says, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and that after that miracles, then the gifts of healing, and on and on. We need to recognize God has a calling on our life, and He's got a gift for us, and when He speaks, we get this. And the Word of God says that the gifts of God and the callings of God are not without re with repentance. They are without repentance. In other words, when God calls you, He wants you to do what He's called you to do. When He's laid something on your heart, He wants you to press on for it. There are days that it gets difficult being a pastor. I've been a pastor for 43 years. And there are days that it's difficult. Days like when you get out in 12, 19 degree weather. Go down to the church. Can't get the computer running even though your son sent you the instructions and you just can't do it. So you end up having to go back to Facebook. That's fine. But we know that God has set us in the church. He calls you to do something and He's going to speak into your life. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you the talents and abilities. He's going to give you the gifts of the Spirit and He will work through you when He speaks into your life. In Ephesians chapter 4, we see the callings again. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry. But God can also speak in judgment. And He does. Scripture tells us that there are going to be judgments that will come down. We are told that as Christians, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We build upon the foundation, Jesus Christ Himself. And there's no other foundation that can be laid for the Christian. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, If you build upon that foundation gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work will be made manifest because the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and that fire will try our works. The Bible says we are going to give an account. Now, I'll tell you what. The exciting thing, the most important thing, is when we get to heaven. The uh, One of the great hymns that we sang a lot when I was young. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. But we need to recognize we will stand before God, even as children of God. And we will give an account. And the Bible says that our works will be declared. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Well, wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn up, but the Bible says we will still be saved by the blood of the Lamb. We will be there because we accepted Jesus as our Savior, but there are going to be voices and speaking of judgment. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus Himself said, Not everyone that says to Me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of My Father. Many will say to Me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in Thy name? Have we in Thy name not cast out devils and in Thy name done wonderful works? And He said, But then I will say to them, I never knew you. Why? We are living in a day where people are false Christians. We're living in a day where there are people in pulpits and people in pews and there are people trying to call themselves Christian and they're trying to act like they know what they're talking about, but they're talking about a false Jesus. They're doing things under false pretenses. They're doing it for themselves. A friend of mine who is also an author of a book, and I would encourage you to read her book, it's called Raised to Stay. It is a great book. And she has come under fire recently because she dared to call out people who go in to pulpits to do a performance instead of doing a ministry. And there is a difference. I don't get in this pulpit every Sunday. 
to stand up here and and look good and talk good and speak well to give some thing that I think is going to make people just feel good about themselves. I'm here to declare the word of God. And that's what we're here for today. And that's why Jesus says some of you are going to get up there and you're going to say, I'm sorry. I'm, Lord, we've done all these things in your name. Well, yeah, but he's going to say, I've never knew you. And then in Revelation chapter 20, it said, I saw a great white throne. And there is one that sat on it who's from, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was no place found for them. And the Bible says in verse 12, The small and great stand before God. The books of His word are open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things written in those books according to their works. There is judgment sometimes when God speaks. We need to make sure that we're ready. You know, my dad... I, you know, I know he's not God, but when I was a kid, man, there were times my dad would call me in front of himself and say, Rex, I need to talk to you about something. And I would, by the tone of his voice, I would be like, oh man, what have I done? Or sometimes I knew exactly what I had done. <laughs> and I knew what was coming. You know, my dad always told me, he said, you know, it's going to go easier on you if you just tell the truth. And I found out what it was like not to tell the truth. And he's right. It's a lot easier on you when you tell the truth. We're all going to stand before God. And when God speaks, we're going to face what we've done one way or another. But when God speaks, your life, the bottom line is your life changes. Your life changes when God speaks. And isn't it amazing to know that He loves you so much, He made a way when He spoke and gave the plan of salvation. You say, wait a minute, God spoke the plan of salvation? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, not only through the Old Testament teachings of the, uh, of the law, but in the very beginning. When mankind fell, God looked at the serpent and said, you're going to bruise the heel of the one that comes from this woman, but he is going to crush your head. You know, that's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus spoke, it is finished. The plan of salvation was completed. When He spoke on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The plan of salvation was spoken over all mankind. And when He said, as I said, it is finished, it changed the dynamics of the future for mankind forever if we will accept Jesus as our personal Savior. In Revelation chapter 21, you see, when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. That stopped the plan of salvation. But in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, God says, the Lord says, it is done. It is done. Everything. It's all done. All the judgments are over. All of time has, has passed. And now all that waits is eternity. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I will give him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Oh, so here's what I just have to say in closing. God made a way. And He made a way for us to be able to know mm -hmm. that every circumstance we're facing, every healing we need of soul, mind, and body, every time we face a circumstance of societal impact, when we face anything in our lives, God can speak into that and He can change it all. Praise God. He can change it all. He can bless our finances. He can bless our mind and give us peace of mind. He can touch our soul and give us hope and health. 
He can touch our bodies and bring us back to fullness. He's the one who formed us, made us who we are. If He can form us, He can fix us. I'll, I'll close with this. You know, my I have a few grandsons and I imagine some granddaughters that love to build Legos. I like building Legos. I was given a special Lego this year and, and I've got it all built. It took some time and the help of a grandson. And what I found out is that sometimes if you drop a Lego, they break. And what you don't want to do is step on a Lego in the dark. But I, that's a whole different sermon. Let me tell you something. But, but I can tell you that because I built it, I can fix it. Sometimes I have to get out the instructions. You see, God built us. He doesn't have to get out the instructions because He is the instructor. He put it all together in the first place. So I'm here to tell you today, my friend, whatever you need from God right now, you can reach out and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son and daughter. You know, not just men are going to heaven. He made us all and he gave us all hope. And I can assure you, my friend, that all will pay attention when God speaks. Amen. Amen. He is amazing, isn't he? Praise his holy name. Now I'm going to go